Shana Tava, everyone. We begin the Shafrit service on page 69. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Ah, 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 ah,
Silent Amidah for Rosh Hashanah begins on page 11 and concludes on the top of page 17.
begin with Chazarat Hashach's The Repetition of the Amidah on page 81. Page 81. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu 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 Abraham Eloheinu Yitzhak Kolobreyolamim 
Kodamohan Divishwaya, Divishwaya, Divishwaya. Which is, I'm, and now the rest of the service basically filler. Um, Aaron, did, Aaron did all the main prayers. It's Rosh Hashanah. Where's everyone going to go? We can stay here all day, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Um, we turn now to page 96 for the Torah service. Page 96 in Kamal.
come before you in this new year filled with all the same faults, yearnings, dreams, disappointments, and hopes. Some in the past year have been dashed and some fulfilled. But we also come with the resolution to be better, to try harder, to move ourselves and our souls and our world a little bit closer to what it is you want of us, both as a people and also as humanity, as a world and as a globe. We pray that you will give us the strength and courage in this new year to do what is right and what is good so that we might build a world of kindness, a world of love, and a place of peace. Amen. Amen.
be seated. The reading this morning for Rosh Hashanah is found on page 100. Page 100.
Bye. 
Please rise for the lifting and wrapping of the second safer tone. We continue now on page 108, page 108, with the Haftarah today from the book of Samuel. And we are beginning with which verse? We're beginning on page 110. The 110, just as I said. You may not have heard, sometimes the microphone is tricky. Page 110. As I said, two pages after 108. <laughs> Page 110. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Bachar B'nim Tovim Ratsa B'nibrehem Anemarim Be'emet Baruch Adonai Habokher Batorah Umoshe Abdo Umisrael Sadiq before I know road, 
gates, Chaim, it is a tree of life to those who hold fast to it. And all who follow its ways, follow ways of peace. May we learn to hold fast to the Torah.
125 and concludes on page 139. When you have concluded your Amidah, please be seated.
Once again, when you've completed your Amidah, please be seated. for Sinai Temple, Sinai Temple Religious School, and Camp Ramah. The Shinshinim program is a program of young Israeli Anisim who volunteer in Jewish communities around the world for the Jewish Agency for Israel. I had lots of concerns before I got here, leaving my family, my friends, my country, but in the moment I got here, all my concerns dissipated. Sinai Temple is a warm and loving community, almost like the peace of Israel is right here in this congregation. Let me tell you about myself. I live in Haifa with my parents, my little sister, my little brother, and my dog Luna. One of the main reasons that I'm here is to bring Israel to the temple in many ways. I love Israel with all of my heart, and I want to convey this love to you. First, it's my home. But really, Israel is all of our homes. It's the place that connects Jews around the world, a place where each of us can feel connected to our religion, connected to our culture, and connected to each other. I hope we can speak about Israel, your opinions, your questions, your hopes and dreams for the Jewish state. I invite you to come to my Hebrew classes, which will be offered on the second Shabbat of the month, where we will also discuss current events and how the past impacts Israel's future. This morning, I stand before you as a representative of Israel, and I know how much Israel means to this congregation. And you, all of you, can invest in Israel right now through the incredible organization, Israel Bonds. When you buy an Israel bond, your investment will help every aspect of Israel's economy. Israel bonds have also greatly influenced Israel's evolution into a groundbreaking global leader in high tech, green tech and biotech. We live thousands of miles away from Israel, and yet, right here, in your seats, 
you can make a difference and help Israel grow and thrive. Please, take your ticket and find a sticker that is labeled Israel Bonds and put a sticker on the Israel Bonds card. Congregants are walking around, ready to collect your donation. Thank you for investing in me. Thank you for investing in Israel Bonds. Thank you for investing in Eretz Israel. It's an honor for me to be here and take part in your temple and your community. I would love to get to know you throughout the year. I look forward to a great year together. Chag Sameach Veshana Tova. Am Israel Chag. And while we are collecting the bond cards, it's our honor. It's our honor to have our a cappella group, formerly known as Pella, but Kol Zimra, who's going to share with us a wonderful Israeli medley. <coughs>
That was Pella. Thank you so much for that beautiful and, of course, very traditional rendition, just like they did in the old country, of a medley of songs from Israel. On page 140, On page 140, we begin the Musaf service with the Hinnity prayer. And the Hinnity prayer, of course, takes its theme from what Abraham says to God when God calls to him and he says, Hinnity, I am here. Because the greatest gift that you can give to God or to another is presence. The fact that you are here. The same is true for community. The fact that you are present is the greatest gift that you can give to the community. And in response to that gift, the leader of the prayers, the Chazan, declares his own presence and his own willingness to pray on behalf of us and behalf of the Jewish people. The Hinnity Prayer, page 140.
Isaac and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Great, mighty, awe-inspiring, transcendent God who responded to Moses saying, Eheyeh, Asher, Eheyeh, I will be with you in the past, present, and future. That my prayer reaches your throne through the merit of the honest, righteous, and devout people and for the sake of your glory. Praised are you, merciful God, that hears prayer.
as we turn to page 143 for the Unitana and I look around the sanctuary. And I see people who over the years I've shared so many different kinds of life cycle events with. It occurs to me that the Unitana is one of those prayers that you understand better as you get older, and yet in a way you hope you never understand. That people who can read this prayer and not feel anything are in some ways lucky because they don't understand the power of the recognition that our lives are fragile and fleeting and that life comes with no guarantee. But for those of us who have been touched by the reality of what the Unitama Tokef says and means, those of us who share with the author of this prayer a recognition that life is forever uncertain and that how we are today may not be how we are tomorrow or next week or God knows next year. <laughs> For them, the Unitana Tokef retains a power and a depth and a meaning that is beyond expression and beyond words. Let's read together in the English as we turn to page 143. Let us speak of the sacred power of this day, profound and awe-inspiring. On it, your sovereignty is celebrated and your throne, from which you rule in truth, is established with love. Truly, you are judge and prosecutor, expert in witness, completing the indictment, bringing the case, enumerating the counts. You recall all that is forgotten and will open the book of remembrance which speaks for itself for our own hands have signed the page. The great shofar will be sounded and the still small voice will be heard. Angels will be alarmed, seized with fear and trembling, declaring this very day is the day of judgment. For even the hosts of heaven are judged, no one is innocent in your sight. All that lives on earth will pass before you like a flock of sheep. As a shepherd examines the flock, making each sheep pass under the staff, so will you review and number and count, judging each living being, determining the fate of everything in creation, describing their destiny. How many will pass on and how many will be born? Who will live and who will die? Who will live a long life and who will come to an untimely end? Who will perish by fire and who by water? Who by sword and who by beast? Who by hunger and who by thirst? Who by earthquake and who by plague? Who will be strangled and who will be stoned? Who will be at peace and who will be troubled? Who will be serene and who will be disturbed? Who will be tranquil and who will be tormented? Who will be impoverished and who will be enriched? Who will be brought low and who will be raised up? But Shuba, Shiva, and Siddhartha have power to transform the harshness of our destiny. Please rise, page 143.
dust and we return to dust. We are as withered grass, a broken shard, a shriveled flower, a passing shadow as a fading cloud, a fleeting breeze, as dust that is scattered in a dream that vanishes, but you are ever present. You are eternal, your time has no measure, and there is no understanding the mystery of your nature. Act kindly for the sake of your name. Sanctify us by linking us together with you. Amen. The ark is closed, but we remain standing for the Kedusha on page 145. It's all the answer.
своих писем. We continue on page 146. 146 with our Mishorari choir leading us in the full Ma'ami.
Chazan continues with the Timloch on the top of page 151.
at the beginning of this sermon, I'm going to need your help. I'm not going to begin this alone. We are going to engage in the purest form of prayer, which the Hasidim call the Nigun. A Nigun is a melody without words that lifts the soul to God. And I'm going to sing it. And you're going to catch on if you don't already know it because it's simple and it has no words. And I'm going to sing it until you sing it with me. Over and over again. Until the entire congregation forget the fact that you're dressed up and you're fancy and you're an important person. You're a soul praying to God. And it goes like this. Yai bidi bai bidi bai 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 yai bidi bai bidi bai yai bidi bai bidi bai 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 yai bidi bai bidi bai yai bai 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 yai bai 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 yai bidi bai bidi bai yai 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 Why is it 
that when the Soviet Union was persecuting Jews, there was a worldwide movement to help Soviet Jews. You know, at the same time, there were other religious persecutions in the Soviet Union, but there was no other worldwide movement. It's because Jews are not a religion. A religion is part of what we are, but we are not a religion. A religion is something that you believe, and if you believe it, you're part of it, and if you don't believe it, you're not part of it. But you know and I know that sitting here right now are there people who have all different kinds of beliefs and unbelief. What we are is a religious family. And family is different. Today, on the High Holiday Reading, we read about family. Genesis starts with family. Why? Because the lesson of the tradition is that the Jews are a family. And that has some really important implications. The first is that our family is various. We have lots of different kinds even ethnicities of people in our family. I remember so well when I was a student in rabbinical school, and I was in Israel, and it was during the Operation Solomon when the first Ethiopian Jews were being brought from the Civil War in Eritrea to Israel. And I remember listening to the radio and the BBC commentator, BBC, said, look, I have no great sympathy for the state of Israel. But I have to admit, there is no other country in the world that would send its planes halfway across the world into a war zone to rescue people of a different color because they say, I am your brother and sister. It's family. Some of our family is born family, some of our family is made family, some join it, some travel with us, but we're family. And not only in one place, it is true that the majority of Jews in this world live in Israel or the United States, but we have family all over the world. Let me give you the example of three trips that I'm taking this year to visit family. With the men's club, we're going to Paris, to Elnet. Elnet is the European equivalent of APAC that tries to connect European governments to Israel. Because in Europe, even in Paris, we got family. Then, with those of you who are in the AT age group, the 21 to 39, I'm leading along with Michael Berenbaum, courtesy of the Sisterhood, a March of the Living trip to Poland, to Auschwitz, to remember what happened to our family. And then later in the year, I'm going with the JDC to Tallinn, to Helsinki, to St. Petersburg, because guess what? There are Jews there, and we support and help them. Family. That's what we do. That's who we are. That's why in 1947, when a British soldier, not an Israeli, but a British soldier, was killed in fighting in Beersheba and it was discovered that he was Jewish, he ended up being buried in Israel. And in Beersheba today, you can still see his grave. And you know what it says? It says, Buried far from his country, but at home. Why do I bring all this up? I bring this up because when a Jew is in need, we don't ask their political opinions. Because we know that Jews constitute 0.2% of the world's population. 
2%. We are fewer than 15 million people, and yet we savage each other because of politics. Jews write other Jews out of the Jewish people and out of the Jewish tradition because they're Orthodox, conservative, reform, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democratic, support this treaty, oppose that treaty, like this candidate, don't like that candidate. It's absurd. We're family. We're family. Do you know why I started this with the Negro? Because when we were singing together, nobody knew. You didn't know who was Ashkenazic and who was Sephardic. You didn't know who grew up in Poland and who grew up in Tehran and who grew up in New York and who grew up in Los Angeles and who grew up in Argentina or Mexico. You couldn't tell. You were just singing with the family. And then over and over and over again, I see people making comments that exclude other members of the family. <coughs> Jews have survived for thousands of years. Are we really going to allow the issue of today to be the determining factor? Or are we going to let our enmities override our eternities? As soon as I write something like, we should be nice to each other, on Facebook or on Twitter, I get a storm of, yes, we should accept that. <laughs> those people over there, those Jews who are betraying Judaism by supporting a position that I disagree with, we can't be nice to them. We are a tiny family. We're like a vanishing puff on the face of the earth. Really, we have to pick fights with each other because of something that we will forget tomorrow or next month or next year or in four years or in eight years. And I know all of you will say, we're not gonna forget this, but it's exactly the same thing that people said four and eight and 12 years ago. And you don't remember what it was you were fighting about. And even if the fight is a good fight, you can fight in families without exiling people from your family. And the tone that you use if you want to let people hear you is not the tone that I hear. There are a lot of letters in the Torah, but you know what the very middle letter is? It's above. And above can mean and or it can mean but. In other words, it can sever or it can connect. So it is possible that part of the Jewish people will be the above that severs. But what a tragedy that would be. Now I know, and you know, that a lot of rabbis across America are giving sermons about what they consider to be a crucial political issue. And the fact that I have not spoken about certain political issues has infuriated people at this synagogue and even in the community. <coughs> but I'm talking to family. And I want to remind you who we are before we fight. I don't know if any of you remember the first High Holiday Sermon I gave down here. I started with The Simpsons. I thought I should make a good intellectual reference to make an impression. So I went straight for the cartoon. And it was when Marge is giving a Thanksgiving dinner and her mother comes and she opens the door and her mother says to her as her opening words, I have terrible laryngitis and I can't say anything so I just want to say this, you never do anything right. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
That's good. That lets me know every 23 years I can repeat a joke. <laughs> and the point was, why is she allowed to say that, as painful as it is? Because love has to precede criticism. Because if you don't love someone, they're not going to listen to you when you attack them on Facebook or in person. And I don't hear enough love expressed by Jews for Jews. I hear a lot of anger and a lot of criticism, but very little love. And I want the strategy of Edwin Markham, who wrote that wonderful poem about the circle. He drew a circle that shut me out, heretic, rebel, a thing to flout, but love and I had the wit to win we drew a circle that brought him in. If you want a model, here's the model I propose for 5780, Reb Lev Yitzchak Reb Lev who was one of the greatest of the Hasidic masters, was known as the Oheg Yisrael, the one who loved Israel. And he was always expressing his love for the Jewish people, but he wasn't only expressing it, he was demonstrating it. So in one of the famous stories that's told about him, he walked outside of the synagogue on Yom Kippur, and outside the synagogue, standing there on the sidewalk, was a Jew smoking. So Reb Lev Yitzchak went up to him and he said, my friend, I'm sure you're not aware that today is Yom Kippur. He said, of course, everyone knows it's Yom Kippur, right? Reb Lev Yitzchak said, well then, perhaps you are not aware that on Yom Kippur it is not permitted to smoke. He said, Rabbi, I'm not an ignorant man. I know. I know you're not allowed to smoke on Yom Kippur. It's he popped away. <laughs> and Rabbi Yitzchak said, well, then probably you want to stop smoking because it's not allowed on Yom Kippur. And he said, no, Rabbi, I'm perfectly fine smoking even though I know it's not allowed. Yeah. At which point, Rabbi Yitzchak looked up at the sky and he said, you see how wonderful are your children, dear God. Confronted with three possibilities, he still wouldn't lie. <laughs> I'll tell you one more story about Reb Lev Yitzchak. Just to say what we don't have and we don't do. There was a man in his congregation that no one could stand. He was difficult and he did terrible, terrible things. And there were all sorts of awful stories about him. And he once approached Reb Lev Yitzhak and he said, you know what I am and you know what I do. What do you have to say to me? And Reb Lev Yitzhak said to him, you know in the Talmud it teaches us that at the end of time when the Messiah comes, all our sins will be turned to light. My, how you will shine. <laughs> It's not easy out there. There are things that engage our hearts and engage our emotions and tear us apart. But really, there are enough people in the world that want to tear us apart that we don't have to do it to ourselves. It's time to draw bigger circles. It's time to let in the people that you exclude based on what they believe or what they don't believe or who they support or who they don't support. You don't have to think them right. You just have to think of them as family. You just have to remember that in the coming year, it would be good if we sang with each other more than we fought with each other. And if we understood each other more than we argued with each other, we are so few. And we need each other so much. And the thing about a Negro is you can't argue with the words. You can just feel if it stirs your soul. 
Aven Yakir Le Ephraim, is not Ephraim, a beloved son of Page 161. <coughs> Looking down the page, it's at the Gimel. So it's two paragraphs up in the English and the Hebrew.
<laughs> with Guy Zofer on page 162. <laughs>
Kagan, who joined us for the third rendition of A Russian Sabatino. And now it's our great pleasure, aren't they great, our wonderful showroom choir. They're absolutely fantastic. Go ahead. They're going to lead us in a couple more songs. We continue with They All Kulang, and we invite everyone to sing along as well. Top of page 168, They All Kulang.
We are grateful to you for the gift of their lives, for the joys we've shared, and for the cherished memories that do not fade. I'm going to ask those in mourning and those observing at your site to please rise for the mourner's cottage. Kadish Chateau, page 174. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash Shemei Rabah. The Alma, the Ra, the Ute, the Amnil, the Malkute, the Chaye Kom, the Yomen Kom, the Chaye, the Bolte, Israel, the Gala, the Man, the Arim, the Ru, the Shemei Rabah, the Ra, the Alam, the Omei Omei. Yit Parah, the Yit Shabbat, the Yit Parah, the Yit Ramam, the Yit Naseh. Vehita dar, vehita lev, vehita la, shemei kudisha, leila, leila, minkol birchata, shirata, dush bechata, benechemata, da miram di alma di ru, yeheish lama rava min shemaya, zechaim aleinu di alchol Yisrael di ru, oseh shalom di alma, hu ya se shalom. May God grant comfort and healing to the hearts of all who mourn. Let us all say. Here's my announcement. There's lots of stuff going on at the synagogue all year, including on the high holidays. I hope you will take advantage of all of it. If you need more information about any of it, just consult the flyers, call the office, ask the local clergy, one of the board members, or show up, right, exactly, <laughs> at virtually any time of the night or day, and there will be something for you. And with that, it is my pleasure to call upon our president, Jamie Berman. Thank you, Rabbi Wolpe. Shana Tova. I am pleased and honored to welcome you to our high holy day services. We appreciate your membership at Sinai Temple and thank you for joining us and being a part of our wonderful community. I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our clergy, Rabbi Wolpe, Cantor Feltman, who have nourished our souls during these holy days. A warm thank you to our choir director, Ariel Cohen, and our choir for the inspirational services and to our professional staff who work so diligently behind the scenes to bring us together in comfort and beauty. Thank you also to our lay leadership who devote their time and resources for our community. Sinai Temple is here to serve all your needs. Our religious school, Sinai Akiva Academy Day School and High School are an integral part of our synagogue. We have classes for infants through high school, and we pride ourselves that our students are engaged in the joy of learning. <laughs> also, Mount Sinai Memorial Parks and Cemeteries in Hollywood Hills and Simi Valley are owned and operated by Sinai Temple. Together, our synagogue, schools, and memorial parks and mortuary help us fulfill our life cycle events. Our annual appeal will be coming on Yom Kippur. You may not know, but our membership dues do not cover the cost of providing all the programs and services that we provide to our members. We will be asking for your support and participation in our annual fundraising campaign. Thank you in advance for your support. My husband, Joel, and I wish you a new year filled with health, happiness, peace, joy, and prosperity for you and your families. We will be concluding uh, with Adon Olam on page 175. The cantor and I um, will walk to the door to greet those of you who forgot to leave early. Um, <laughs> Adon Olam, page 175. 